Hello, welcome to my channel. Today, we want to use the Wellstrat substitution to solve this integral. Wellstrat substitution is a very powerful tool to solve the integrals containing the trigonometry functions. And for this integral, it looks very simple. So do you think this integral is easy or difficult? If you think it's easy, then you vote sheep. If you think it's difficult, then you vote wolf. So let's get started. First, let's clarify a concern here. So for this integral, maybe you think the most general form should be written in this way, where the capital A and capital B are real numbers. So if B equals to zero, then this integral is reduced to here, which is integral respect to the constant, and this is simple. If b is not equal to 0, then we can factor out the b, so we got here. If we redefine a equals to capital A over capital B, then we got here. So you can see the core part is what we are solving for. So let's solve this integral. So first, let's write sin x by using the double angle formula. Note for the number 1 in the denominator. It looks trivial but we use the identity to write it as cosine square plus sine square. And then we just divide the cosine square on both numerator and denominator. So we got here. Then we can apply the Wellstrat substitution, and we let u equals to tangent half x. So the sine x is reduced to, to here. Then we deal with the x part. So the half x equals to arc tangent u. Then we apply the differential operator to the both sides. And for the left hand side, we take the 1 half out. And for the right hand side, it equals to the 1 over 1 plus u squared du. So we got the dx here. Next, we just plug in the sine x and the dx to the original integral. So we got here. Then we simplify the product of these two fractions, and we got here. Next, we need to discuss the a here. So for case 1, this is a simple case, where the a equal to 0. And then this integral is simplified to this form. We cancel the number 2, so we got the integral respect to the 1 over u. So the result is natural log u plus c. And then we replace the u by the tangent half x. So here is the answer for the case 1, when a equals to 0. So far, this integral is simple, so it's a sheep. Next, let's see what happens when a is not equal to 0. Then we can take the a out of the integral sign, so we got here. Next, we add the 1 over a square and subtract the 1 over square. So for these three terms, we can complete the square, so we got here. And note for this term, colored in red, we need to discuss the sign for this term. And for the different sign, for example, positive or negative, the result will be completely different. And for the sign of this term, we have three cases need to discuss. So this term can be less than zero, equal to zero, or greater than zero. So let's start from the simple case, which is equal to zero. So when this term equals to zero, it's equivalent to say the a equals to plus or minus one. So this red term vanish, and we got here. Then we rewrite it into the power of negative 2. So we can integrate it, then we got here. Next, we write it into the fraction form, so we can simplify it. And we got here. And finally, we plug in the u equals to tangent half x. So here is the answer for case 2, when a equals to plus or minus 1. And note for the sign here. When a equals to positive 1, we take the plus sign for the result. When a equals to negative 1, we take the minus sign for the result. So case 2 is a little bit complicated than case 1. So I call this integral sheep-like. Next, let's look at the case 3, when this red term is greater than 0. And this is equivalent to say the absolute value of a is greater than 1. So we define the capital H equals to the square root of this red term. And we define u plus 1 over a equals to h times theta. So we plug them back into this integral, and we got here. And note that the first term, u plus 1 over a square, 
is converted to the h square theta square. And the red term is converted to the h square. So we simplify it, and then we got here. This is a simple integral. It's just equal to the arc tangent theta. Next, we plug in the theta. So we got here. And then we simplify the component inside the arc tangent function. So we got here. And note for the term AH, which is colored in green. Because the capital H is equal to the square root of this red term, so we multiply the A on both sides. So we got AH equals to square root A square minus 1. So we can replace the AH by the square root A square minus 1. So we got here. And finally, we replace U by the tangent half x. So we got the answer for case 3. So the case 3 is much more complicated than case 1 and case 2. So I call it wolf-like. And finally, let's look at the case 4, when the right term is less than 0. And this is equivalent to say the absolute value of a is less than 1 and not equal to 0. In this case, we rewrite the red term into the green term by switch these two terms, and then we put the negative sign in front. And then we define the k equals to the square root of this green term. And note that the green term is greater than 0. And we let u plus 1 over a equals to t, so du equals to dt. Then we plug them back into the integral, so we got this very simple form. And then we just factorize it. And here we use a partial fraction. So we rewrite the product of two fractions into the subtraction of two fractions. So we replace the blue term, and then we got here. Next, we just integrate it term by term. So we got two log functions. And then we use a property for the log function. So we rewrite it into the division of these two terms. Before we plug in those substitutions, let's simplify it first. So we multiply a on both numerator and the denominator. And since k equals to the square root of the green term, then we multiply a on both sides. So we got a k equal to square root 1 minus a square. And for the t term, we multiply a on both sides. So we got a t equals to a u plus 1. Here I summarize the result so far. And I put a different color for a k and a t. And next, we just plug in and replace them. So we got here. And finally, we replace the u by tangent half x. So here is our final answer for case 4. So far, we are 100% sure this integral is definitely a wolf. In the last slide, I summarized the result for all the four cases. So you can see this integral is given by a very simple form, but the solution steps and the results are very complicated. And there are totally four cases we need to discuss. So the conclusion is, this integral is definitely a wolf, but pretend to be a sheep. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe my channel if you like it.